Namaste. So, yesterday's video of the Vishnu Sahasranama is very significant for me because I practiced this great mantra for many years uh, before coming to the teaching of Shankaracharya, I was a Vaishnava. So naturally, I used to chant all the Vishnu mantras, including Vishnu Sahasranam. Maybe I should say especially Vishnu Sahasranam, because I chanted it for years. <laughs> I mean, literally every day. Uh, even I would loop it and, and play it while I was sleeping and like that. And because of that, I learned it very well. And I just came across Shankaracharya's commentary on Vishnu Sahasranam, and it's absolutely astounding. It's just astonishing, amazing. Uh, so I've, of course, included a link in the video description. And um, you should look at it, because it explains explicitly how Vishnu is actually Brahman. He is like the, the agent of Brahman in the universe. So this is very important, and he brings out literally hundreds of quotes from the Upanishads to prove it. So it's a very significant, very important commentary. Now, how you should practice it, and what are the results? Well, maybe I should read the results first, because that will motivate you to practice it. The results are given in a section called the Phala Shruti. In other words, hear the results. Bhishma. Thus I have recited to thee, without leaving out any, the thousand divine names of the high-souled Keshava, whose glory should always be sung. That man who hears this hymn every day, or who recites this, never meets with any evil here or hereafter. By doing this, a Brahmana knows the end of the Vedas. A Kshatriya comes out victorious in battle. A Vaishya becomes possessed of great riches, and a Shudra enjoys great happiness. He who aspires to the merit of righteousness succeeds by reciting this, in getting it. He who desires wealth likewise gets it. The man of pleasure has his desires satisfied, and he who desires offspring acquires offspring. That man who with devotion and perseverance and heart totally turned towards him recites these thousand names of Vasudeva every day after having purified himself, succeeds in acquiring great fame, a position of eminence among his kinsmen, enduring prosperity, and lastly, that which is of the highest benefit to him, that is, moksha. Such a man never meets with fear at any time and acquires great prowess and energy. Disease never afflicts him, fair complexion, strength, beauty, and accomplishments become his. The sick become hale, the afflicted become freed from their afflictions, the affrighted become freed from fear, and he that is plunged in calamity becomes freed from calamity. The man who hymns the praises of that foremost of beings by reciting his thousand names with devotion succeeds in quickly surmounting all difficulties. That mortal who takes refuge in Vasudev and who becomes devoted to him becomes freed from all sins and attains eternal Brahman. They who are devoted to Vasudev have never to encounter any evil. They become freed from the fear of birth, death, decrepitude, and disease. That man who with devotion and faith recites this hymn of 1,000 names succeeds in acquiring felicity of soul, a disposition of forgiveness, prosperity, intelligence, memory, and fame. So is that enough to get you to chant it? 
or at least hear it. Uh, actually, this was my practice for many years. And I can tell you that this is not hype. This is not exaggeration. These are really the benefits of hearing and chanting this prayer. Now you might say, oh, well, the Sanskrit is too difficult, wah, wah, wah. Well, <laughs> the beginning part is difficult, a little bit difficult, but the chants themselves are very easy. They're an Anushtup Chanda, which means very simple meter. And of course, we have transcribed the text into IAST format that's also linked in the description. And you can download this and read along with it as you hear it. Then slowly, slowly, you'll become familiar enough to chant it. Plus, I slowed down the whole recording <laughs> because Subulakshmi, you know, she's from South India. She's probably chanted this every day of her life from when she was three. So she just zips through it, you know. <laughs> But I slowed it down a little bit to make it a lot easier to follow. So this is the great benediction. Maybe it doesn't give immediate results, but as it says in the Fala Shruti, if you chant with faith and perseverance, those results will come. I mean, one of the ways that I became expert in Sanskrit was by chanting this because it contains every letter and every permutation of every letter and combination of vowels and consonants in the Sanskrit alphabet. So slowly, slowly you learn how to pronounce them and what their meanings are. So I can't recommend this highly enough. I mean, uh, I, I could go on for a long time, uh, but really, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting, as they say. So you should uh, hear, and you can also download the uh, soundtrack. Again, the link is in the description. Keep it on your computer or phone and listen to it whenever you get a chance, like when you're going somewhere and you have nothing to do or you're, you're bored or even at night before you go to sleep. But of course, the best time is early in the morning, right after morning bath, and maybe offer some incense and then hear it. Follow along in the text and soon you'll find yourself chanting it. So I hope you take full advantage of this practice and get all the benefits. You know, it's like I'm just giving you the keys to the universe. Because uh, Shankaracharya says in his purport, in his commentary, one who chants this becomes Vishnu himself. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.